is a snake Let angels run straight for Let angels Bring forth Dear and crown Him, crown Him, crown Him Crown Him and crown Him, Lord oh. And crown Got up from the grave, for he promised he will come again. Oh, he got up from the grave. Oh, see what the Lord, see what the Lord has done oh can't you see what see what the law has done what we've been waiting for what we've been waiting for has come to pass has come to pass oh see what the Lord has done oh, he died on a rugged cross. A rugged cross. Oh, he died on a rugged cross. He went, he went to Calvary for you and me. For you and me. He died. He died on. A rugged cross. Oh, but he got up. Oh, he got up from the grave. Oh, yes, he got up from the grave. For he promised he will come again. Oh, he got up from the grave to mm -hmm. see what the Lord has done. See what the Lord has done. Oh, see what the Lord has done. 
what we've been waiting for has come to pass oh see what the lord has done oh see what the lord has done oh see what Has done. Hallelujah. Yes.
on just one more time. Oh, and he walks with me. He walks with me and he talks. And he tells me. Tell me And the joy, the joy. The joy we share. God is so good. Happy Resurrection Day. Praise God. We thank God for this blessing us just to come out this morning. And I was out walking the dog this morning. I was like, man, this is a beautiful day. And we have a beautiful Sunday morning to worship him and give him the, all of our, give him the glory he deserves. Praise God. I just I want to read a little bit of the um, 23rd Psalm. Uh, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valleys of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, and thy rod and thy staff shall comfort me. Thou prepare a table before me in the presence of mine enemies, and anointeth my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And Lord continue to bless this holy and divine word. Good morning. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for waking us up this morning. Good morning, Lord Jesus. We thank you for bringing us to an, uh, the last Sunday of March, which is also the Resurrection Sunday of Jesus Christ, Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus, there has been a lot of loss recently, Lord Jesus, and we ask you that you be with the families who have lost loved ones, um, Lord Jesus. Strengthen them, guide them, comfort them in their time of bereavement, Lord Jesus. Uh, we ask you that you be with us as we learn another lesson from our guest preacher of the hour, Lord Jesus. Let us uh, take something from the word uh, for today, Lord Jesus, and apply it to our daily lives. And we thank you, we honor you, we praise you, and we magnify your name, Lord Jesus. And we ask you that you bring us all home back safely. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Oh, come on. You ought to be excited. This is the Resurrection Sunday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I don't know about you, but I'm excited because he got up. I said he got up. <laughs> they thought they had him. They thought they put him out of business. But thank God he got up. <laughs> with all power in his hand. Oh, somebody ought to get happy about it. Hallelujah. Oh, victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. Oh, come on, help me out. I told Satan. I told Satan. Get behind. Yeah. Be oh, victory. Victory today. Oh, victory is mine. Victory is mine. Oh, victory, victory today is mine. I told Satan, I told Satan, get me behind. Victory today, joy is mine, joy is mine, joy. Oh, joy is mine. Joy today, joy today is mine. I told Satan, get me behind. Cause joy today. Oh, peace is mine. Peace, peace is mine. Oh, yes, it is. Peace today is mine. I told Satan, get me behind. Because peace. Now, listen, listen. I said, we have the victory. Hallelujah. Come on, help me. We have the victory. Hallelujah. We have the victory. We have the hallelujah. We have the victory. Hallelujah. 
Every knee shall bow. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess. He is Lord. He is Lord. He is Lord. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess. Oh, he is. Oh, yes, he is. We have the victory. Yeah. We have the victory. Hallelujah. We have the victory. We have the victory. Hallelujah. We have the victory. Hallelujah. We have the victory. Hallelujah. Every knee shall bow. Knee shall bow. Every tongue confess. He is Lord. He is Lord. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess. He is Lord. Now listen, listen. I command you, Satan, in the name of the Lord, to take up your weapons and flee. For the Lord has given us authority to walk all over. And one more, listen. Oh, you don't have to kill a lamb anymore. Oh, you don't have to sprinkle blood over the door. Because someone has taken the place of the lamb. Yeah. Oh, oh, he is the great. We have the victory. Yeah. We have the, hallelujah. We have the victory. We have the victory. Hallelujah. We have the victory. We have, the, hallelujah. We have the victory. Hallelujah. Every knee shall bow. Every knee shall bow. Every time comes. Oh, he is Lord. He is the Lord. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess. He is Lord. He is Lord. Oh, oh, oh. victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan. I told Satan. Get thee behind. Victory. Victory. Come on, just one more time. Victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today. Today is mine. I told Satan. I told Satan. Get thee behind. Oh, victory today is mine. I'll put those hands together. This is victory day. This is victory day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise him, praise him, praise him. I thank and praise God for being here this morning. We just thank everyone for participating in our devotion. Time we'll turn it over to the poor. Let your church say amen. amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know what you come to do, but I come to praise the Lord. Amen? Amen. Let's bow our head. Father, in Jesus' name, we come to say thank you. You've been good to us. You've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. We say thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we give you the glory and the praise because it belongs to you and no one else. Pray, Lord, that thou would bless this house of worship. Bless everybody that's here in the name of Jesus. God, bless every home that's represented in Jesus' name. If there be any sick among us, we pray that I would touch and heal right now in the name of Jesus. Whatever they stand in need of, God, we know that you're able to provide what they need. Ask it in Jesus' name. Pray that thou bless this house. Bless the choir in Jesus' name. Bless in the pulpit in Jesus' name. Bless everybody in the name of Jesus. Bless our pastor in the name of Jesus. God, we know that you're able to be everywhere at the same time. Pray that thou bless Reverend Jackson right now in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, there's so many people that's in my mind to pray for. I can't be 
everywhere at the same time, but you're there right now. Touch right now. In the name of Jesus. God, we want you to bless, oh God, our preacher of the hour. God, we want you to new, uh, not to let your anointing be upon yes, Lord. that word that shall be proclamated today, that it might fill our very souls, that it might touch our hearts, that it might bring about a change in the atmosphere. Then, Lord, when it's all said and done, and we can't come this way no more. Pray that thou would give us a home in thy kingdom. We'll be able to praise your name forever. This we ask in no other name but the name that's above all names. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. And all the people of God say, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> I was sponsored reading this thing in the program. Thank you. If you don't have the program, it'll be coming from Matthew to 28th chapter, verses 10 through 20th verse, and, and we also have it on the screen. Amen. So we know that everyone should have it. So everybody who have it, say amen. 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 And the readers, then said Jesus unto them. Be not afraid. Go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee, and there shall they see me. And when they were assembled with the elders and had taken counsel, they gave large money unto the soldiers. And if this come to the governor's ear, we will persuade him and secure you. So they took the money and did as they were taught. And this saying is commonly reported among the Jews until this day. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him. Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. All together, teaching all them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the ends of the world. God sent his son They called him Jesus Because he lives, because he lives, I can face tomorrow, just because he lives, oh, fear is gone, because, because I know.
is gone because because I know he holds the future and life and life is worth the living just come on because he lives Come on, come on, let's celebrate. And because, because he lives, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Just because he lives, all fear, all fear is gone. Because I know, because I know, no, 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 he holds the future. My, my, my life is worth. Happy Resurrection Day, Second in St. Paul. Amen. Amen. Today is Sunday, March the 31st. Today we recognize Missionary Youth Day. Our guest preacher is Reverend Brian Dixon of the Word of God Baptist Church out of University Park, Maryland. Love offering addressed to Reverend Dixon may be presented during the offering period. Deaconess Susan Stewart is president of the missionaries. Sister Leslie Borns is president of the Youth Fellowship Ministry. Our 2024 Men's Day Drive is in session through March 26. The adult assessment is $250 of the best you can offer. Teams are posted in the vestibule. Junior Deacon Maurice Toya is the chairperson. Beginning Sunday, April 21st, each month following, um, each month following the morning service, the Youth Fellowship Ministry will meet in the daycare. Sister Borns, as I mentioned, is the president. Amen. Uh, Centennial Anniversary Committee presents 100 years of service in pictures. Now there's an order form on the back table there. You can order the book. Um, the cost is $60 and it's due by April 7th. So we, um, we, is, is, we encourage you to hurry and order it, okay? Um, Reverend Jackson was in Washington Adventist Hospital this past uh, week. She is home now, and she's doing okay. We are so sad to announce the passing of Sister Deanie Blanding McClure that's Deacon Blandon's daughter. Uh, we have uh, heard that there will be a memorial service the, in, the 24th, the 26th of April at West Hydesville Baptist Church. And um, Sister Marilyn Washington of the number one usher board passed on Friday. Um, she is the daughter of Sister Elizabeth Talbot who was also on the number one usher board. Let us please keep um, the sick and the bereaved in prayer. <clears throat> to Pastor Benjamin and all of my church family, thank you all for your cards, gifts, and prayers. Your thoughtfulness and kindness helped to make my 99th birthday celebration beautiful. 
Thank you. To God be the glory. I love you all. Mother Anise Walker. <laughs> She's 99. Bless her heart. 99. Years ago, when I first met Sister Walker, I, I, I used to say, I want to grow up and be just like her. Y'all remember how heavy those tables used to be? Well, the tables are in, in the cafeteria. And I was trying to extend the legs, and she snatched that thing out of my hand and just, you know, just took it. And I stood there and I looked at this little frail woman. <laughs> she was something. She is something. So bless her heart. There are certain people we thank in our prayers for things we appreciate so. But try as we may, we sometimes can't say the words that we want them to know. There are people who often go out of their way to pitch in when there's work to be done. They show understanding, they lighten our problems, they help us in more ways than one. Dear Pastor Benjamin, Deaconess and fellow Christians, I sincerely send you words of love and care to each of you. My prayers are with you. Pastor Benjamin, God gives you renew, renewed strength and tenacity beyond most of us. Strength beyond measure, God is good. Thanks for the cafeteria and the church, just everything. The family loves you, and Norita Thornton had a wonderful home going. Love, Sister Doris Thornton Green. And she sent a love offering with that. Yes, indeed. I'm so happy to announce, if you don't already know, that my husband is here today. But God is so good to us. He is so good to us. He made it possible for him to, as Sister Annie would say, put one foot in front of the other this morning. And I'm just so grateful for that. He still has a way to go, but God is still going to be good. So, so it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But thank you all for your concerns. Everyone has been so concerned about him and offering their prayers and it just did him a world of good to know that he's been cared for, you know. You know, he knows you guys like him, but now he knows that you love him. You know? <laughs> so that, so uh, that has really helped him a lot. I will, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I will now read the guidelines for attending church. To all who attend Sunday school and worship service, we encourage you to be vaccinated. <clears throat> Until further notice, the Franklin Street door will be the only entrance and exit, and all services will remain streamlined and modified. Otherwise, in, unless otherwise indicated, the wearing of face mask is optional. Upon entry, each person must have their temperature checked. If your temperature is 100.4 or higher, entrance will be denied. Hand sanitizer and face masks are available. Once inside the church, members and guests are not to venture beyond the main vestibule, first floor restrooms and sanctuary. The Crystal Room, Cafeteria, Kitchen and Education Center will be off limits to everyone. No one is allowed upstairs except for the trustees. Sunday school class will begin promptly at 9.15 in the sanctuary and end at 10.15. This will be the only class available in the church. We, rec we recommend you arrive by nine o'clock. Any personal communication with Pastor Benjamin must be done by a written note or you may call him on the number indicated in the bulletin. Devotion will begin promptly at 10.20. Service will begin at 10.30. We recommend you arrive by 10 o'clock. There will be one offering and ushers will not pass around offering baskets. For your convenience, offering envelopes have been placed behind each pew. Offerings must be placed in an offering envelope. We ask that you complete the envelope with your name, date, designated offering, and amount. If you need to use more than one envelope, you may do so. Members and guests will process to the tithe box where they may deposit their offering. Missionary offerings are to be placed in offering basket, 
held by a trustee. During altar call, members and guests are to stand, remain in their pew, and pray. During Holy Communion, the covenant reading will be omitted. Members and guests are to process to the communion table to pick up their own communion cup. <clears throat> Use communion cups and be placed in cup holders behind the pews. At the end of the service, ushers will direct the congregation from the sanctuary. Everyone must exit the church immediately following this service. And if I didn't say so before, welcome, Reverend Dixon. We're so happy to have you with us again today. God bless you. Everyone have a great week. Come on, clap your hands again. Help me celebrate Jesus. We've been celebrating Holy Week all week long. On Friday, they nailed him to the cross. On Friday, they counted him for loss. And it was on Friday, they pierced him in the side. I wish I had a witness out there. And on Friday, they watched his mother cry. <laughs> but guess what? Early Sunday morning, something happened. I said, early Sunday morning. It was early Sunday morning. Hey, he got up with all power, all power in his hand. On Friday, they nailed him to the cross. On Friday, they counted him for loss. On Friday, they pierced him in the side. Oh, it was on Friday. They watched his mother cry. But early Sunday morning, early, early Sunday morning, early Sunday morning, he, he got up with all power, power in his hand. And on Friday, the earth turned into gloom. Whoa. And it was on Friday. They put him in a put him in a borrow too. Oh. But he got up from the grave. He told grave, you better behave. He said, death. Where is your sting? He got up hey, with all power, power in his hand. Oh, I said, he got up with all power in his hand. Yes, he did. He got up with all power in his hand. Yes, he did. Church, he got up. He got up with all power in his hand. Oh, yes, he did. Because he, he got up with all power in his hand. Lord, have mercy. I said, he got up. Yes, he did. With all power in his hand. Oh, come on, help me say that. He got up. He got up with all power. All power in his hand. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Church, he got up. He got up with all power in his hand. Oh, he got up. Yes, he did. He got up for you and for me. He got up. The blood came streaming down because he got up. They pierced.
raise him in the side, but he got up. Oh, yes, he did. Oh, yes, he did. He said, Death, where's your sting? He got. They put him in a borrowed tomb, but he got up. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. He got up. He did it for you and me. He got up. Hallelujah. With all power in his, in his hand. Oh, yes, he did. Oh, yes, he did. Oh, yes, he did. Hallelujah. Glory. Yes, amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Y'all looking at me strange up here. But your Lord and our Savior got up. I want y'all to do something with me. It's not going to take long. I need you to look at your next door neighbor. And I want you to say three times he got up. Then give God the praise. Come on, somebody. Give God the praise. He got up. How many of you know he got up? Because he got up. You got up this morning. Somebody need to give God the praise. How many of you out there want to praise God for getting up this morning? Come on, somebody. Didn't he get up? Didn't he get up? Come on, somebody. You know anybody that should be on fire, it should be us. Because if he didn't get up, I, I wouldn't be able to call myself a Christian. I couldn't call myself a child of the king. Come on, somebody. Because he got up, I am somebody. Come on, somebody. You are somebody. Somebody need to give God the praise. How many of you don't mind throwing your hands up and give God the praise? Because he is worthy. We want to we wanna thank Dr. Payton for reminding us as they pierced him in the side, nails in his hands and in his feet. But Sunday morning, he got up with all power. We thank God. We thank God for all y'all being here. We pray that you had a wonderful Holy Week. I know I did. I, I got on my knees each and every day and gave God the praise for each and every step that he made towards the cross and good friday i celebrated come on somebody because if he didn't die i would not be alive come on somebody we thank god for everyone in the house we want to give a shout out to our first lady Amen. sister benjamin being here we thank god uh, i got to give her a shout out because she our pastor's better half Amen. and if she don't stand by his side who will and we thank God for her standing by his side yes, Lord. and doing the things to get him here. We don't know what they go through when they're at home, but we thank God that she's by his side. Yes, Lord. I want to give another shout out to Lisa McKenzie and Medea yes. because we celebrated Scotty here, yes. but if it wasn't for them two, come on somebody, Amen. come on somebody. When we are there for our loved ones, when they are going through something, yes. and we are able to help them, God is proud of us. Yes. Come on, somebody. You need to give yourself yes. a round yes. of applause yes. if you taking care of loved ones. Because it takes a lot to take care of someone Amen. who's not doing well. And we thank God for them. We thank God for all of y'all. And we ask that you will keep um, the Tarbot family in prayer. We ask that you would definitely keep our chairman of our deacon board, um, Deacon Blandin, in prayer. You know, I asked him, what you doing here, Deacon? He said, Sterling, I, I can't do no good at home, but I can come and do some good at the house of the Lord. Come on, somebody. He can give God the praise because we know when the praises go up, come on, somebody, the blessings will come down. So we thank, we thank our choir. We thank our... Our preacher of the hour, he's no stranger. He's a homeboy. And we thank God for him. 
We thank God for the official family. We thank God for all of y'all. Put a smile on your face. If you got two teeth, put it together and still smile. Come on, somebody. Because when you smile, you let God know that he is still good. So we thank God for everyone in our house. We're going to have a good time on this Easter Sunday. Resurrection Sunday. Come on, somebody. Somebody need to give him a wonderful praise. Don't cheat in God on this day. Give him the glory because it all belongs to him. We also ask that you will continue to keep our pastor in his prayer. We thank God for Pastor Benjamin. We pray that God will continue to build him up on every leaning side and give him the strength to stand behind this sacred desk and to be our pastor. So we thank God for that. Now we ask that you will prepare yourselves for giving. How many of you out there are a cheerful giver? Amen. Oh, y'all can do better than that. All right, let's put it this way. How many of y'all love when God gives to you? Amen. Now, if you got that same enthusiasm when God gives to you, Amen. you should have that same enthusiasm when you want to give to the church. Come on, somebody. Amen. Because he said, upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Although this is a church building, this church building got to continue to go on. We got to pay the lights. We got to pay the roof get done. So we ask that you will come and give to our tithes and our offering. And we pray that you be a cheerful giver when you come to give. We ask that our trustees and our, 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 our ushers will take over at this time. We ask that everyone will prepare to give because God gave to us this morning when he touched us with his finger of love. We asked Dr. Payton to give us some marching music, if you don't mind, so they can march around and, 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 and give up that money cheerfully.
Blessing me. He's blessing me. He's doing it right now. Oh, right now. Oh, right now. Oh, I know the Lord is. The Lord. He's blessing me. He's blessing me. He's doing it right now. Oh, yes, he is. Oh, he woke me up. And he's starting me. Oh, on my way. Oh, the Lord is blessing me. The Lord is, the Lord is blessing me. He's doing it right now. The Lord is blessing me. I know he's doing it. Oh, yes, he is. Shoes on my feet. Food on my table. He's blessing me. He's blessing me. He's doing it right now. The Lord is blessing me. He's blessing me. Oh, one more time. The Lord is blessing me. Blessing me right now, right now. Oh, right now. Amen, amen. Let us prepare for our auditory prayer. All things come up the old Lord and the right on. Have we given thee Amen. We want to thank you when you're given. We know that God can open up the windows of heaven and pours out a blessing that we may not have room to receive. It's not only God give us materialistic things or monetary things, but God gives us a reasonable portion of strength. And not only that, he protects us from the seen and unseen danger. That's in another way he gives unto us. And we need to give him the glory when we come to God's house. Thank you, Lord. Because no thieves broke in last night while you slept. No fire broke out and destroyed anything while you slept. But at the appointed time, didn't he touch you? Didn't he woke you up? And then not only that, he, he woke you up in your right mind. 
and you was able to say thank you Lord one more time come on somebody we serve an amazing and wonderful God at this time we're going to prepare ourselves to do something that we all know is important to do and that is to pray Jesus said a man should always pray and not faint Paul picks it up and said we should pray without ceasing I put it this way we should exercise our prayer because the more we exercise it the more stronger it gets so at this time oh, really? oh, okay. do Do it for me. Do it for me. I gotta get permission right now. Pass it on my. You don't mind. I'm uh, asking. Have Reverend Hunter uh, to come to the Lord. pulpit. Lord. Thank God for uh, Reverend it. Hunter. Uh, uh, let us give him a round of applause. We thank God for our. Uh, not a guest preacher, one who was here and is a homeboy of this church. So we thank God for him. So at this time, we'll prepare ourselves for our altar prayer. At this time, we're going to have our own deacon uh, um, whim to come to lead us in our altar prayer. I know it's uh, um, sometimes procedure to ask the guest preacher, but I asked Deacon William in the study to do our altar prayer. Uh, so I don't want y'all to think that I'm out of protocol, but when I asked him, I didn't know that we was gonna have a visitor preacher. So uh, at this time, we asked that everyone would stand and you know what? Prayer can't work if you don't believe in it. Amen. Amen. And it definitely can work if you don't believe in the one that you're praying to. Come on, somebody. So we ask that you will believe in what you ask for, but also leave it at the altar because God have already fixed it. So let us pray with our own Deacon Wim, Johnny Wims. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Our Father, our God, we come, God, just thanking you for your yes, goodness Lord. and mercy. First of all, thank you for who you are in our lives, oh Father. Oh, yes, how Lord. you bless us, how you keep us, how you oh, guide you, us Jesus. throughout the day, throughout the week, throughout every moment of the day, oh God. Yes, how you keep yes, your strong yes. arms of protection around us, oh God. God, we thank you and we praise you, Father, for who you are in our lives, oh Father. How you show us with the way to go, oh Father. How you lead and guide us to all truth. Oh God, we thank you and we praise you, oh God, for who you are, oh God. Yes. Oh God, as we come this morning, we thank you, Father, for our, our church and our church family, oh Father. We thank and praise you, oh God, for just allowing us to be here this morning and yes, to recognize yes, who you yes. are and, and what you stand for in our lives, oh Father. Yes, Lord. Oh God, we thank you and you praise you, oh Father, for our loved ones, our family. And how you keeping us, uh, Keep us this, just this week, oh Father. Yes, God, yes. we thank and praise you, oh Father, for answered prayer, oh God. Yes, God, we just yes. st stop and say thank you, thank oh you, God, because you made a way out of no, no way. way. Oh God, you saw us through our times of trouble. Oh God, you made a way, oh well, Father, when deep, it seemed deep. like it was no way. But you made a way for us, oh God. We thank pray you this deep, morning, oh God. Yes, oh God, yes. we know that we have sick and shut in everywhere. We yes, have Lord. people, oh Father, who are going through right now, oh Father. Right if it's now, not Lord. bereavement, it's sickness, oh God. Have your it's, way, Lord. It's so many things, oh God, that is coming way, our way, oh God. But just let us know, oh God, that you have all power in your hands. Yes, Bless yes. us to trust you, oh Father, to, yes, to make yes. a way out of no way, oh Father. 
put all of our trust in you. Yes, oh, God, Lord. you bring us to perfect peace. Yeah. We'll have perfect peace in you, yes, knowing Lord. that you have all power in your hand. Oh, God, we thank you, oh, Father, for just blessing us, oh, Father, in this service and what you've blessed us with already. Yeah. Through the songs that's been sung, oh, God, mm. through the prayers that's been prayed, oh, God, yeah. we, just ask, we just continue to ask you to touch us and anoint Have us way, as Lord. we go through this service. Have your Bless way, the man of God as he shares yes, your word. Yes, Let yes. it fall fresh on our hearts and our spirits, oh, Father, so we might not be, so we may be able to live more like you, oh, Father, and walk closer to you. You. Yeah. Oh, Father, let us not walk far off, oh, Father, but yeah. let us walk close, close to, to you, you, oh, Father, so we may, be, we may be able to stand, oh, Father, when we are attacked by the devil, oh, God. Yes, we yes. may be able to stand, oh, Father, and be strong in you. Yes. Oh, God, we thank you and we praise you, oh, Ooh, Father, for you, your Jesus. word, how it's good to our souls, so. oh, Father. Oh, God, as we are being blessed this morning, let us be a blessing to someone else as we yes, go out yes, yes. let us be a blessing to someone else let us love our brother and our sister, sister oh god let us forgive our brother and our sister pray oh god. Deep, pray. in the name deep lord deep. jesus we thank you and we praise you again oh father we can't thank you enough yes in jesus name we pray amen 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 we want to thank deacon johnny william for that firm prayer we pray that we would keep each other in prayer because we're going through an election year that we all need to be concerned of how can a man who sits in the highest who sat in the highest office tweet a picture of the former president tied up in the back of a pickup truck and then his campaign tried to defend it. Have mercy, Lord. Amen. I don't know about you, but we need to pray. Yes. And I like what Pastor said the last time he preached about the political thing. Whoever's in office, we know God is still in charge. But even though God is still in charge, God wants us to pray. Because when we look at our society, you got folks who rather believe in a lie yes. than to believe in the truth. Yes. And Jesus tells us that the truth will set you free. Yes. Come on, somebody. Yes. We need to pray. Not only we need to pray, we need to praise God. We need to be like Paul and Silas when they was in jail at midnight. Come on, somebody. Yes. They begin to praise and praise God and the doors open. Come on, somebody. We know that we do the same thing. God would cause an earthquake to hit this nation. Come on, somebody. So we need to pray. That was disturbing when I heard and saw that. And then they knew it had to defend it. But didn't he look good with President Obama and President Clinton? Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Didn't he look good? He had a nerve to tell a joke about Trump. Come on, somebody. I don't know about you, but I ain't, I ain't gonna get in there. Yeah. I don't know about you, but I love President Biden. Come on, somebody. Yeah. I, I thank God for him. Yeah. Put us back on the right track. We had a president to tell us to take Clorox bleach for COVID. Come on, somebody. And you want to put him in office? I ain't gonna hold you long. We gonna, we gonna move on and get ourselves ready for our service. Um, we're going to ask that our choir come, but before then, I want to introduce this preacher. I'm so proud of Reverend Ryan Dixon. Amen, amen, amen. God has moved him in a mighty way. Yes, yes. And he is doing great things. He graduated from the Washington Baptist Seminary. And if I'm not, not mistaken, he graduated from Virginia Union, or have you? You fin oh, he said he finished. Good oh, God Almighty. Amen. 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 You know, God is good. And then not only he playing a leading role in the minister's conference. Uh, uh, he's doing great things. God is using him. I think he's the chairman of the sick committee. Uh, uh, 
he's he's our uh, um, our newsletter uh, reporter with um, Reverend Evans, and God is constantly using him in a mighty way. Thank the Lord. Amen. Amen. And what I like about him so much, the young man can preach. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. He can preach. And God have used him in a mighty way. And he's been going all over this city preaching God's word. Uh, he's a homeboy. He's no stranger. Come on, somebody. He's, he's one of us. And we need to give him a round of applause for, for God using him in a mighty way. Come on, somebody. Whenever I see him at the minister's conference and he's doing his duty, I say, that's one of ours. We just had one that stepped down from being the president in line there. That's one of ours. Come on, somebody. The host uh, church is Reverend Davis. That's one of ours. Come on, somebody. God is using the men who came out of this church in a mighty way. And we need to give God the round of applause that he deserves. Come on, somebody. And we want to thank God for the woman who's responsible for that. And that's his mother, Sister D. I call her Sister D. Uh, I call her Sister D for a reason. She know what it is. I ain't going to say it. But that's, that's, that's my girl there, Sister D. And we thank God for her for raising a son such as Ryan Dixon. So we ask that you will prepare yourselves that God will use him in a mighty way to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ I don't have to introduce you I already know him yeah. but I want you to do one thing I want you to stretch forth your right hand and I want you to repeat after me Lord, Lord bless the preacher, bless the preacher. Lord, Lord bless the preacher, bless the preacher. Lord, Lord bless the preacher, bless the preacher. That, I that I may be blessed, may be blessed. give God a round of applause y'all after that, after the choir, we will hear none other than Reverend Ryan Dixon of the Word of God Baptist Church. When Jesus died on Calvary, people came from miles. To see, they said, if you be, be the cry. Won't you come down and say? Save your life, save your life, oh, but my Jesus, my Jesus, he never had, serve him, <laughs> for he knew <laughs> that, oh, Satan, he knew he was just tempting him. <laughs> oh, 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 yeah. But if he had come down, down from that cross, hallelujah, oh, 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 oh. then my soul. Your soul, our soul, will still, still be Lord. Yes, yes. 
Oh, I said, and if he had come, come down, come down from that old rocky cross. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, 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 I said, then my soul, your soul, our soul, will still, will still be lost. Hold on. Come on, choir, help me out. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah. He would not, he would, he would not, not come, come down, down from the cross. From the cross. Hey. The cross. cross. Just, just, just to say, to say himself. Hold on. He decided. Decided to die. Oh yes, he did. Just to save, save. Oh, he would not come. He would not come down from the oh that cross. Just, just to, just to save. Just to save himself. Oh, he decided to die. Oh, just, just, just to save. Just to save. He, oh, yeah. He would not. He would not. No, he wouldn't. He dared not. Hallelujah. From the cross. Oh, oh, oh. The cross. Just. Just to say. Oh, 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 oh himself. Oh, he did sign it. Sign it. Yes, he did. To die. Just. Just to say. Hey, me. Oh, he would not. Oh no, he would. Oh no, he would come down. Oh, he had you in mind. He had me in mind. Oh Lord, and oh, just to say, say himself. He decided. He decided. Decided to die. He was on Calvary. He was on Calvary. But he got up. He got up. He decided to die. The nails couldn't hold him. The devil couldn't hold him. He got up with all power. He got up with all power. He got up with all power. Yes, he did. He decided. Whoa. He decided to, to die. Just, just to say. Thank you, Lord. Save me. Oh, yes, he did. Hallelujah. He did it for you. He did it for me. He could have come down. He could have come down. But he decided. Oh, yes, he did. He decided. Yes, he did. To die just to say. Somebody ought to be glad about it. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. That's all right. Somebody need to give God the praise. Yeah, yeah. Before our preacher comes, we want to just recognize the young people in the house. Somebody give them a round of applause. 
thank God for Queen Esther Young and Sister Leslie Bourne and all the beautiful young people here today. Uh, we thank God for them. So our preachers is, is coming. about decisions and Jesus made a choice as the song reminds us he decided he decided it was not any other human being that took his life from him but he decided out of obedience to the will of the father and out of love for you and me he decided to die yes. and not just any normal death yes. but the most brutal yes. heinous horrific death possible yes. the word excruciary which means excruciating was invented to define the horror of crucifixion. Can you imagine something so terrible that no word was in existence for it? They had to create a word to explain how severe this public humiliating execution process will be. But glory to God that we all can say with certainty and with surety that early, early, early Sunday morning, he got up. So we thank God that Jesus decided to die, but that he also decided to get up, recognizing the angel of this house in this absence, Pastor Nathaniel Benjamin Jr. to Reverend Robert Sturdivant, to Reverend Randolph Lawson, Reverend James Hunter, to the deacon ministry, deaconess ministry, trustee ministry, missionary ministry, nurses ministry, ushers ministry, youth ministry, music ministry, audio visual ministry <laughs> if i forgotten anyone i don't want to leave anyone out mother ministry flower ministry yeah help me out it's been a while since i've been so there may have been some additions that i'm not aware of but we want to just recognize all of the ministries and all of the members and all who are in attendance at second new saint paul baptist church on this resurrection sunday morning Excuse me, I kind of always, kind of always get a little emotional to an extent with the waves of nostalgia that comes upon me when I'm back here at Second New St. Paul Baptist Church. And of course, it would be remiss to not acknowledge the presence of the First Lady, Sister Amen. Mary Benjamin. Amen. But Bear with me for just a moment, you know, as reflect, do some reflections. Um, remember, remember sunrise service? Oh, yes. Yes. Just saying, just saying. Remember sunrise service because on this yes, blessed morning, yes, 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 yes. we celebrate yes, we that the sun has risen. Amen. That he would not come down from That's the cross, right. but he did come out of that tomb. Yes, Lord. So again, we give God the glory. I'm not planning to hold you long, but as a Baptist preacher in the African American community, Amen. we are used to what is known as call and response. Amen. 
so when I say something, if I get a little feedback, I can hasten on. But if it's a little bit too silent, then perhaps you didn't catch what I was saying. And I may have to repeat it. I may have to move a little slower, which means it may hold us a bit longer, which I'm sure on this wonderful, beautiful day, we have some plans afterwards. So if I can have some amens, we can get you up out of here in reasonable fashion. A very familiar passage of scripture on this morning coming from the gospel according to Mark, the 16th chapter, verses 1 through 8. Extremely familiar because it was actually part of Sunday school lesson. So this may serve as a bit of a refresher with the little, little spices and other elements added to it. But again, the gospel according to Mark, the 16th chapter, verses 1 through 8. And permit me, if you will, to read from the New Revised Standard Translation. And in the gospel according to Mark, chapter 16, verses 1 through 8, we find these words recorded within this translation. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome bought spices so that they might go anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go. Tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The blessed word of the Lord. You may be seated. Also want to recognize the president of the Missionary Ministry, Deaconess Susan Stewart, and Amen. President of the Youth Ministry, Sister Amen. Leslie Barnes. And in my haste, I forgot to mention, bring you greetings from the Word of God Baptist Church under the leadership of Reverend Dr. John L. McCoy. Amen. For a few moments, again, if you give me some amens, there'll be a few moments. We want to come before you with the subject entitled, The Reason to Rejoice. Amen. The Reason to Rejoice. In all four Gospels of canonized scripture, each author gives us a glimpse into the earthly life events of Jesus the Christ. Collectively, we have what is known as gospel harmony. All of the gospels certainly record the anguish and horror of his death by crucifixion and all of the gospels provide an account of the resurrection with several variations in the details. Whether viewed separately or all together, the last section of each gospel relays the message that Jesus has risen from the dead. The gospel according to Mark was the first one written, so for today we will use his chain of events. All right. All right. Mark opens his gospel in chapter 1, verse 1, with the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Uh-huh. How poetic that his gospel closes with good news 
about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Uh, there's quite a bit to connect and share, so we want to set this off just right. This fifth Sunday is unique, to say the least. The fifth Sunday is usually recognized here at Second New St. Paul Baptist Church as Missionary and Youth Sunday. Amen. This Missionary Youth Sunday is extremely special because it's also Resurrection Sunday. Amen. Resurrection Sunday is the grand finale of a sequence of events that both begins and ends in celebration. Amen. Last Sunday, Palm Sunday, was the preliminary, and today is the victorious completion. Today, March 31st, 2024, not only marks the conclusion and culmination of Holy Week or Passion Week, but it also brings us to the close of Women's History Month. Amen. It's no coincidence that all of these are wrapped up in this day. Amen. History is defined as a continuous systematic narrative of past events relating to a particular people, country, period, person, etc. History impacts the present, and the present eventually becomes history. Yes. Yes. Through the ages, the halls of history have been graced with numerous women who were champions in Christianity. Uh -huh. Women such as Phyllis Wheatley, yes. Sojourner Truth, yes. Betsy Stockton, Amen. Clara Brown, yes. Mary McLeod Bethune, yes. Pauli Murray. Mahalia Jackson, yes. Dorothy Height, yes. Marie Van Britten Brown, and Coretta Scott King, yes. along with an extensive host of others, have left their footprints in the sands of time as sisters of service. Amen. The impact of ladies across the nation and across the globe is undeniable. Amen. Second New St. Paul has a rich history of unsung heroines or sheroes, if you will. Amen. Women such as Deaconess Mother Gladys Williams, yes. Yes. Reverend yes. Wilhelmina Thorpe, yes. Mother Caroline White, yes. Sister Barbara Cox, yes. Sister Maggie Coleman, yes. Sister Ethel Ward, yes. Sister Nona Johnson, yes. Mother Mary McNair Williams, yes. Mother Thelma Watkins, and yes. Sister Dorothy Hill, yes. for starters. Yes. Where would society be without the efforts of our women? Yes. Where would the Christian community be yes. without the endeavors and labor of our women? Yes. Where would Second New St. Paul Baptist Church be without the servitude of sisters such as Sister Annie Hudgens, yeah. Sister Leela Givens, yeah. Sister Fannie Mae Benson, yeah. Sister Frances Penn, yeah. Sister Hazel Staten, yeah. Sister Julia Searles, yeah. Sister Alfreda Richardson, yeah. Deaconess Amanda Bird, yeah. and Sister Lucille Smith. None of these entities would be where they are without our women. Yes. The recognition of women relegated to one month is the equivalence of trying to capture the sum total of black history in 28 days, Amen. 29 if leap year. Amen. It simply cannot be done. Amen. It is the same as minimizing the exploits of women in scripture. The deeds of women, particularly in the life of Jesus, is worthy of acknowledgement and appreciation. Although slighted by the status quo of remote times, women participated in ways unrivaled by their male counterparts. The cohesion of the Gospels all attests to a contingent of women who were devoted to Jesus. 
These women followed Jesus, financially supported Jesus, were the last ones to remain at the cross and the first ones to arrive at the tomb. Which brings us to our selected text for this morning. Mark makes mention of women en route to the final resting place of Jesus as they receive the shock of a lifetime. These women are then delegated and drafted to inform others of good news that changed the world forever. The news these women were charged to carry is debated and discussed even to this day. It is something to smile about. It is something to shout about. It is something to celebrate. The report recorded by Mark in the opening section of this 16th chapter is a joyous occasion. As Christianity commemorates this day, we want to give thought to the following question. What are some common realities connected with rejoicing? Our lifted text shows a quartet of areas to contemplate as we celebrate. The first area calling for attention is the determined mindset of femininity. The first verse informs us that after the Sabbath ended, a small group of women came together in order to attend to business. It's important to know these women and note their presence because they are responsible for the continuation of the entire movement. Where would the Christian faith be without their zeal and their desire to pay respects to their recently executed teacher? These women who during those times were the minority and Uh viewed as such by society. Uh Minorities have been targeted and treated harshly throughout time while humanity fails to accept the fact that the minority performs the work of the majority. The first name that we find mentioned is Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene holds some significance as her name always appears first when listed with other women in the Synoptic Gospels. Arguably one of the most important women in the New Testament, her name has been more associated with affliction rather than assistance. Two passages of scripture detail she had seven demons removed from her, while there are 11 other passages where she is mentioned. She is mentioned by name more than most of the apostles and more than any other woman in the Gospels. She gave of her resources to the ministry of Jesus while some only regard her as the woman who had seven demons. You know, there are persons who are trapped in the past with tunnel vision on what used to be rather than seeing progression happen. There are some so focused on what was. They refuse to praise God for what is and what can be. Mary Magdalene has been erroneously and inaccurately portrayed as a prostitute. How many of our women have had their names dragged through the mud, mistreated, neglected and shunned by society because of false reports or gossip. It has been said, people will hate you, rate you, shake you and break you. But how strong you stand is what makes you. Our women have been ignored and taken advantage of. Our women have been degraded demean and devalue. Plenty of our women suffer from forms of abuse and still give tirelessly of themselves in every conceivable way. The text lists Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James, and Solomon. A group 
of women together. Contrary to popular belief, a group of women can get along. Yes, they can. A group of women, hear me, men, are not always stirring up trouble or fussing or just engaging in idle chatter. These archaic and outdated notions, such as what I've just mentioned, cause many to miss the beautiful blessings that women bring. When women come together, many strategic ideas emerge. Sadly, insecurity causes some to dismiss the sheer brilliance of women only because they did not think of it themselves. These were grief-stricken women. The hurt and loss they felt were fresh as they were reeling from the events that so recently passed. Even so, they were on a mission. They had a task to see through to completion. The hearts of these women were weighed down with sorrow, yet they resolved in their minds to go to the tomb and anoint the body of Jesus. Suffering contains worth as it has a way of changing one's perspective. It can shift the focus from self over to God. And it's interesting that their grief, that their pain and their sadness actually pointed them in Jesus' direction. Situations that drive us to God have value, even when attached to pain. So I say, hearing that there have been losses here, that blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you know, we, we simply must admire the bravery of these women to venture out and pay respects to Jesus while his closest followers, which we frequently discuss, were unseen and unheard. These women went to purchase spices oils and perfume to anoint the body properly. Uh -huh. They were not empty handed, uh -huh. but brought something useful. Uh -huh. Countless women have brought their gifts, their talents and their treasures to participate in worship. Yeah. These women did not serve out of popularity or out of position, but they served from a place of purpose. So I ask, which of these three drives us most? Is it popularity, position, or purpose? Because the purpose will remain when popularity fades and positions are filled. We must salute our sensational, spectacular sisters who understand a woman's worth is found in their minds and in their hearts. A price tag cannot be placed on intelligence and kindness. Right. The precious jewels known as women have the perfect blend of conviction and concern while exemplifying perseverance and passion. Yeah. Uh -huh. The wonder of women who willfully serve. Women like Sister Elaine Parker, yeah. Sister Marietta Parker, yeah. Sister Bertha Hill, yeah. Sister Donna Moore, yes. Sister Anna Ruth Edwards, yes. Sister Emma Johnson, yes. Sister Martha Randall, yes. Sister Geraldine McConan, yes. Deaconess Frances Sharp, yes. Mother Mary Miller, yes. Sister Maddie McLean, yes. Sister Renee Young, yes. Mother Maddie Washington, yes. and Sister Moselle Bean. Yes. The second verse mentions very early on the first day of the week. You know, there's something about the time we approach pressing issues, but oh, to press one's way forth on a Sunday morning. To rise with the intent to worship on this day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and we will be glad in it and we rejoice in the determined mindset of femininity. The second area clamoring for attention is the difficult matter we face. Mary, Mary, and Salome 
head towards the tomb with the spices to anoint the body of Jesus when they remember a sizable detail. It seems that they may have a problem. The third verse finds them discussing among themselves and inquiring who will roll away the stone. Yes. The entrance to the tomb was sealed with a massive stone. Mm -hmm. The stone was a barrier. Yeah. The stone was a hindrance. And the stone was an obstacle keeping them from their goal. Yeah. Yeah. The stone was blocking them from the one who is the bread of life. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus is the necessary sustenance yes, for our existence. Yes, the stone was blocking them from the light of the world. Jesus is clarity amidst confusion. The stone was blocking them from the door of the sheep. Jesus is access to salvation. The stone was blocking them from the good shepherd. Jesus is our protector and our provider. The stone was blocking them from the resurrection and the life. Jesus is the new beginning for all eternity. The stone was blocking the way, the truth, and the life. Yeah, yeah. Jesus is the only path that offers authenticity and vitality. Yeah. The stone was blocking them from the true vine. Jesus is the connection that nurtures that. That stone is in the way. What keeps our sisters from reaching? what they most desire. All right. Could it be the pressure to just push through? Mm -hmm. Might it be struggles with self-confidence? Mm -hmm. Perhaps some of the same set of circumstances many minorities encounter. Yeah. Discrimination, yeah. limited opportunities, yeah. lack of support, and stereotypical views. Right. What hinders the worship reserved for Jesus Christ. Many truly yearn to worship Jesus but find themselves restricted by tradition. The fourth verse informs us that the stone have been rolled away. So if the stone which blocks and prevents access is no longer an issue, then the question to be asked is, what's the real problem? What's wrong? Marvin Gaye inquired in a melodious way, what's going on? Sisters, mothers, ladies, what is the matter? Is it the constant influx of items on the to-do list that requires immediate attention? The seemingly endless obligations that either pull or push in every direction except for the chair on the couch or the bed for just a brief moment of rest? What's going on? Yes. The fifth verse mentions a young man dressed in a white robe inside the tomb. This young man is most likely an angel. The text points out that he was sitting on the right side. How strange it is to take a seat inside the empty tomb of one who was publicly condemned for blasphemy and crucified as an insurrectionist. The fact he was sitting, the fact he was sitting down, shows authority as well as comfort in the situation. The position on the right side shows favor as the right side is reserved as a place of honor. On the other side of their issue, which was already rectified, there was divine representation. You see, there's a touch of glory on the other side of the present situation. The fifth verse goes on to say the women were alarmed. They were amazed and astonished. Isn't it shocking how right, uh, it's shocking that right before the breakthrough, God makes his presence known. 
Isn't it a shocking sight to behold how God moves in our lives? Challenging circumstances can serve as a catalyst to draw closer to God. Hardship cultivates our faith to rely on God and appreciate life's journey. This is how we manage the difficult matters we face. The third area craving attention is the delivered message of faith. The sixth verse contains the core, the heart and soul of the Christian faith. It dispels anxiety and worry. It proclaims Jesus was crucified and has risen and it reveals a vacant tomb. Second New St. Paul, this is why we celebrate today. This is why we give praise and reverence to Jesus. This is why we rejoice in worship of the Lamb of God, which took away the sin of the world. The crucifixion of Jesus Christ on Golgotha's hill outside Jerusalem was the world's greatest injustice, but it ultimately led to his resurrection and the salvation of humanity. An occupied cross on Friday afternoon gave way to an unoccupied tomb by Sunday morning. The seventh verse, the seventh verse holds instructions for the women to share that they will see Jesus in Galilee. Yes, yes, yes. Jesus proceeds his followers by going ahead and moving forward. He is continuing to carry on with a purpose. He has produced results by shedding his blood on the cross for the remission of sins and has defeated death by rising from the grave. He gives and fulfills a promise because verse 7 closes with the words, just as he told you. What better way to support his words in the sixth I am statement? Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. That's how the seventh verse ends, but let's examine real quickly how it begins because the wording is rather odd and somewhat puzzling. The instructions given to the women were, but go, tell his disciples and Peter. Strange, tell his disciples and Peter. That's peculiar and rather odd because wasn't Peter already a disciple? Many would even argue that Peter was the lead disciple, second in command to Jesus himself. So why was Peter mentioned separately? And why not before instead of after the disciples? Could it be this game-changing moment was for all of the disciples in general and for Peter in particular? Are there persons among us who are part of the group, but still possibly feel excluded. Persons who, although in the company of others, still feels isolated. Peter proclaimed that he was willing to die with Jesus and even tried to defend him during the arrest in Gethsemane where he was rebuked for his act of violence. Peter, who boldly fought for Jesus in the garden, stated several times he did not know him uh -huh. when under pressure and scrutiny in the courtyard as Jesus faced trial. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Peter was racked with guilt from his denial of Jesus before the crucifixion. You know, we need to be careful how we approach and treat each other because some, some people go through life riddled with pain over past choices and cannot find any relief and the last thing they need is to be berated and talked about. 
The message was reassurance that Peter was loved, but it also served as preparation because Peter was going to be elevated to the next level of ministry. We need to be cautious of how we treat one another because we never know what they are going through, but we never know how God is planning to take them to the next level. This was a message of reconciliation and a message of restoration. Jesus was going ahead into Galilee. Jesus continues to lead today. So the question I pose is, are we willing to follow? Jesus lives, Jesus leads, and Jesus loves is the delivered message of faith. The fourth and final area crying for attention is the delayed momentum by fear. The eighth verse puts the focus directly back on the band of women who now have an awesome assignment. They now bear the responsibility of communication. After receiving the words at the tomb, it's time to pass the message on. The eighth verse mentions that they left with haste. They made tracks. They took off. The exact word used in the text was fled. Hmm. Fled is the past tense and past participle of flee. The definition of flee is to run away Yes, as yes, from sir. danger right. or That's pursuers. Right. These women ran from the tomb. Yes. The eighth yes, verse says terror and yes. amazement had seized them yes, and they said nothing to anyone yes, for they were afraid. That's right. That's right. The first words they heard was do not be alarmed. That's it. That's it. Yet, they ran. The women told, were told that Jesus has been raised and to go tell the disciples they will see him in Galilee. But they did not speak to anyone because they were afraid. Fear has a way of creating silence. Does fear keep us quiet? What are we afraid of? Is it the circumstances or what comes next? Are we fearful of what is or of what may follow? Are we wrestling with what to say and do or are we worried about the reaction of others. Are we afraid of bad news? Bad reports from the doctor. This crazy upcoming presidential election. The continuous rise in crime committed by the youth. What has us so fearful that we can remain silent? Is it the deliberate evaporation of our culture? the dismissal of our heritage and erasing of our contribution to human history? Is it the instability within the political infrastructure of this nation? Could it be the economic woes and worries associated with inflation? How about the systematic assault on the foundation of family and community? Or is it the plight of the youth and as were the circumstances that provided our backdrop for our text, the unjust execution of the innocent who has ideals to inspire others and act in a way that will ultimately impact the entire world. You see, there's good news to share, but it remains unheard. The truth is, not all youth are involved in destructive lifestyles or are hanging with the wrong crowd or are being promiscuous or are abusing their minds or their bodies. Many of our youth are studying hard every day, 
Many are working to break generational curses and make a difference in their homes, in their schools, in their church, in their community, in the nation, and within the entire world. There is good news, so why stay silent? We must share what we have heard so that people will know that there is a change on the horizon. That's right. The eighth verse closed with, for they were afraid. Sometimes we are just overwhelmed and just cannot get the words out. The shock to our system causes silence. Has anyone ever experienced something that is just so surreal that it has to gradually seep in Amen. before Amen. genuinely accept it, Amen. even when there's no arguing that it actually happened, Amen. that it is real, and that it is true. Right. Maybe a better way to say it is that it's still buffering. Yeah. That's right. Connecting. That's right. That's right. Downloading. Yeah. Yeah. Sinking. That's right. Transferring and transmitting. In other words, please stand by. Give me a moment. The initial surprise takes time to process, and this causes the delayed momentum by fear. Oh, but as I draw to a close, I say to you with surety that there's no need to fear anymore because Jesus is not dead. He's very much alive. I may not have a harmonic hoop, but I close this message knowing that Jesus lives. The women at the tomb moved beyond their original state of fright and eventually passed along the message. So I'm here today passing the message to you that Jesus lives. All believers serve as missionaries. Therefore, we must all pass the message. Jesus lives. Yes, he lives. The legacy continues to live at Second New St. Paul Baptist Church because it lives in women like First Lady Mary Benjamin, like Reverend Odessa Jackson, Mother Queen Esther Young, Sister Dottie McNeil, Deaconess Susan Stewart, Deaconess Elnora McCall, Sister Lisa McKenzie, Deaconess Polly Brown, Sister Pamela Hodge, Sister Leslie Bourne, Sister Bessie Mitchell, Sister Essie Neal, Sister Elaine Watson, Sister Lola Willisey, Mother Celestine Johnson, Mother Anise Walker, Deaconess Brenda McCutcheon, Sister Paulette Nowden, Sister Cleopatra Smith, and Sister Sandra Wright. The list of women working for the kingdom is inexhaustible. And time, sorry you all, but time will not permit me to name everyone. That's all right. Mm. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Call me biased. Call me partial. Call me prejudiced. But I would be remiss not to mention one of the hardest working women I know. My greatest influence and greatest inspiration in the personality of Johnny Mae Dixon. The message delivered by the young man to the women in the sixth and seventh verses is bigger than the women at the tomb. It's greater than one month of history devoted to women. It's larger than one day globally recognized in the world of Christendom. The words spoken, the message given, it's beyond any of us, but it is up to all of us. The women who left the tomb, the women I mentioned, both past and present, the innumerable names that I would love to call who were not mentioned, but only were omitted due to lack of time, but are engraved in our minds and on our hearts. It is up to you, it is up to me, it is up to us collectively to tell everyone that we possibly can. Call it an assignment, call it a duty, call it a mission, call it an obligation, call it a responsibility, call it a task, whatever you call it. Remember, it is still up to us. 
One day, a delivery man brought an average sized, beautifully gift wrapped it box to church uh -huh. with the instructions to leave it uh -huh. in plain sight near the altar. The service began and an usher mentioned to the pastor, the box was there. The pastor said, we'll get to it later. Uh -huh. The service continued and after a heartwarming song of praise, a choir member signaled to the pastor about the box. Uh -huh. The pastor signaled back, yes, sir. we'll get to it later. Uh -huh. As the service continued, the worship leader welcomed visitors, read the announcements, and also made reference to the box. Uh -huh. The pastor assured the worship leader, we'll get to it later. The service continued and after the giving of tithes and offerings, the deacon asked the pastor about the box. The pastor said, the pastor preached the sermon, extended the invitation, had the altar prayer and was preparing to give the benediction when the voice of a young child was heard saying, but the box, what about the box? The pastor said, oh yes, the box. Several of you have been wondering about the box and now we'll open the box. The wrapping was carefully removed and the box was opened and to the surprise of the entire congregation, the box was completely empty. People started murmuring. The pastor informed the church he was the one who had the box delivered. He then asked everyone, what did they expect? No one knew. But everyone expected something yeah. inside the box. Yes, but you know, perhaps, perhaps that's the problem. Yeah. 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 Too focused yes, on the box yeah. and missing everything else. Yeah. It's been said that sometimes yeah, yeah, yeah. the present situation yeah. yes, seems bigger than the promise. Yeah. Second New St. Paul, that's all right. think. Better know it. Outside the box. Yes, because Jesus yeah. is not in the box. Yeah. And Jesus yeah. is not in the tomb. Yeah. I open by saying yeah. Resurrection Sunday yeah. is the grand finale of Holy Week. Yeah. Perhaps I spoke too soon. Yeah. For rather than being the ending, it signals the beginning. Yeah. The beginning of something new. Yeah. The dawning of a new day. The arrival of the newness of life. Because he lives, we can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because we know he holds the future. And life is worth the living just because he lives. We celebrate because he leads, because he loves, but most importantly because he lives. We rejoice because he lives. Yeshua HaMashiach lives. Jesus the Messiah lives. Jesus the Christ, he lives. God bless you and may heaven smile richly upon you. Spent in vanity and pride. We want to utilize this moment in time to extend the invitation to salvation and to Christian discipleship. Yes, we celebrate today, but we celebrate not only because he lives, 
We celebrate because the plan of salvation was brought to completion. And we are not only able to have an abundant life, but through Jesus Christ, the risen Savior, we can have eternal life. Perhaps there is one among us who has not made that decision. We talked about earlier how he decided. Now is decision time. Is there one among us who has not received Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord? Now is the opportune time to admit that we are in a situation where we cannot rescue ourselves, but believe in the finished work of Jesus the Christ and confess him as Savior and Lord. And just like that, one is ushered in to the family of faith, the household of God, and is a born again believer. And Second New St. Paul Baptist Church is a wonderful place to continue on the Christian journey. Bible believing, sound doctrine, teaching, and preaching. Fellowship of the saints and encouragement to hold on a little while longer, to press forward and to push through. So is there one among us may come by baptism, Christian experience, or letter? But as we celebrate, I give to remember Jesus that Jesus offers eternal life. Now I gladly, now God bless you. I gladly you may be seen. My King, now my rapture soul can only sing. I can oh, we oh mercy. Grace was free, pardon there was multiplied to me there, there my burning soul found liberty, mercy, mercy there was great and great. Was free, pardon, pardon. There was multiplied to me. There, my burden, there, my burden, soul found liberty. Let us give Reverend Ryan Dixon another round of applause Amen. for that message that, uh, that he preached. I, I told you, this young man can preach. Yes, sir. We thank God for him. And not only that, he's one of ours. Um, at this time, we're going to have a brief remark by our sister uh, McCall as you come. We're going to ask um, Reverend James Hunter to address the church uh, in his own way. And Amen. after that, we're going to return the rest of the service over to Reverend Ryan Dixon. And he will give the benediction and his remark in his way. So we ask that you will continue to draw the rest of your day. And may God continue to smile upon you. And go get your Easter eggs. Amen. Praise God, everybody. I want to thank you all for coming out today on the fifth Sunday. You know, usually people think they don't need to come to church on the fifth Sunday because it's Missionary Sunday and the pastor won't be here. But they missed it today if they didn't come. Cause, because I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you that little Ryan Dixon, who is Reverend Ryan Dixon now, he preached today. He brought a sermon, he brought a message that everybody should hear. I know that the time is well spent, but I have a few things I need to say. I want to recognize our president. You know that our president is Sister Susan Stewart. I'm not the president. I want y'all to know that. And Sister Tracy Stewart is her emissary. And she sees that everything that Sister Stewart needs to be done or wherever she needs to be, she makes sure 
that she, she does. I want to not forget about Sister Leslie Bourne and the youth today. Because, of, yeah. because maybe some of you all don't know, this is Youth Sunday. Not just in this church, but all over the world. Last week was Youth Week. And I'm so glad that Sister Bourne brought these. You know, I look at some of these kids and I said, I knew them before they were born. And now, you know, Sister, Sister, Bourne's, uh, <laughs> Sister Bourne's grandson, boy, that boy taller than me. <laughs> and I remember before he was born. We want to thank you, Sister Bourne, for bringing them out. And I'm so happy to see the Fox family today. Now. <laughs> I want to let you all know that Brother James Fox is dead, but the Fox family is still singing. If you go on Facebook, you will see them. I want to thank all of you that, that came out today. I want to thank you that you recognize the fact that even though it's Easter Sunday, we need to be in church. Amen. Now, the doctor told me yesterday, I had a medical procedure that yesterday. The doctor told me to stay home today, but I'm here. Amen. Right. You know, he can't tell me what the Lord wants That's me to right. do. You know, what the Lord wants me to do is what I'm going to do. We thank you, Reverend Dixon, and I can't forget about Sister Johnny May. Because if, if you see Reverend Ryan Dixon anywhere, you're going to see Sister Johnny May. Yeah. So we thank you, thank you, thank you for coming. And on the fifth Sunday in June, the missionaries will celebrate their annual day. Amen. You don't want to miss it. Amen. Don't want to miss it. Want to thank Sister Cleo yes. for getting this choir yes. singing, because yes. you know the missionaries are few. And we got some more people. Brother Peyton got with Sister Cleo. Yes. And I think we did great. We did great. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Payton. Thank you, Sister Cleo. And may the Lord continue to bless you. Have a great Easter. Don't eat too much. <laughs> but don't eat too little either. Amen. 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 Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Since I was invited to stand up here, I just wanted to go ahead and praise God. Since we got to be invited up here. Since you let me come up in this sacred ground, why can't I go ahead and praise God? Amen. Huh? My children always ask me, say, Dad, you don't never say nothing. I say, because I wasn't invited, but come on over and ask me something. I'll tell you what God has done for me. Yeah. Huh? Amen. 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 I can hear Dr. McCoy all throughout Reverend Dixon. You can tell that he's been rooted. Yes, he is. Because I come under Dr. McCoy. Uh -huh. So I know it when I hear it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know it when I hear it. Yeah. It's good to see you. It's always good to see you. Amen. Always good to see you. Good to see everyone. Amen. It's good to see everyone. I've been on this little weight loss, but I almost started running up here. <laughs> I almost felt like I could run a little bit. Amen. Huh? Thank you, thank you. It's good to see every last one of you. Amen. It's good to see you. I've been praising God, and I'm gonna continue to praise him. Amen. I'm gonna continue to teach my children how to play God. Amen. Praise him, you understand what I'm saying? Amen. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna praise God and take care of family. Amen. And we're gonna show them yes. what Second New St. Paul showed us. Amen. Right? Because this is where it started. Amen. Huh? Amen. This is where it started. Yeah. Yes. yes. Trustee board, maybe been over the trustee board, but God had a calling that was beyond the trustee board. Amen. Beyond the trustee board. I love each and every one of them over there. But he had a calling beyond the trustee board for each and every one of us. It's good to see you. It's good to see you. I love each and every one of you. I have nothing but good things to say about Second New St. Paul. I have nothing bad to say about Second New St. Paul. Second New St. Paul saved me. It saved me. You're seeing a finished product of Second New St. Paul. You keep praying for me, and I'm going to keep praying for you. Amen. Right. Amen. 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 Amen.
indeed. Amen, amen. Yeah, I, I exerted some of my energy, so I was like, going to lead the stand alone this moment because <laughs> quite a bit has been said, as was mentioned, um, time is well spent. So, again, we just thank God for all that has transpired, and we continue to celebrate the goodness of the Lord as we proclaim that he lives. Uh, again, not a slight to anyone who I did not mention. Uh, we will be here until next Easter, next Resurrection Sunday. If I were to continue to go through the extensive roll call of those who have impacted the Second New St. Paul Baptist Church. But the mission continues, and we will continue to pass along the message that Jesus, the Christ, he lives. If all hearts and minds are clear, we ask that we may stand for the benediction. Let us pray, eternal God, our Father, again we say thank you. We thank you for another blessed privilege and another opportunity to worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you, God, for this day, this Resurrection Sunday, and we rejoice in the fact that our Savior lives, that the tomb is empty, and we rejoice knowing that not only does our King live, but he shall return. So we ask that you will prepare us, God for the arrival of the king. Keep us throughout the remainder of this day as we depart from this place, but never from your presence. Continue to watch over us and give us traveling mercies and bless our families individually and collectively as we give your name all the glory and the praise. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And the church said, Amen. Amen.